My name is Christian. I'm going to be building a timber frame structure that's going to serve as a proof of concept for a house I'm planning on building in a few years. We're going to start with this, to this, to this, to this. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be making a king post, one that looks very similar to this one right here. This is going to go between the tie beam, which you can see one of behind it, and the top plate, uh, or I guess the ridge beam, which is the, I think it's the main top plate for the structure. Again, I'm, I stink with the actual proper terminology for all these things. Um, so this tenon is going to go through that particular mortise there and the tenon on the other side is going to be going through the bottom of the top plate. And this is the piece that I'm going to be working with today. I've already done, let's see if I can focus, already done the layout by doing the standard center lines. Um, same way as I've, I showed in other videos and in the uh, um, the version I did in Google SketchUp. So I've got this pretty well laid out. Hopefully the wind won't be too bad today. I'll try and stand in front of the camera for now. Um, so I've got everything marked out. It's really just two sword joints, uh, two tenons with uh, these angled shoulders on them. Um, so it's a nice reprieve from chiseling all of the uh, mortises in the previous pieces. So. Um, I've got two of them done. This is the last one. This is actually the center one, and this one is actually going to have two or three more inches on the tenon that goes through the tie beam, because this one is going into the oak one. So I had to think long and hard about exactly what dimensions to change on this piece versus the other ones uh, in order to deal with the tie beam that's a little bit deeper. Um, but I'm, I'm going to end up shifting the tie beam down. So the distance between uh, this hilt, so to speak, and this hilt is the same as all the other ones. And it looks like we've got a little, little friend hanging out here. I don't know if I can focus on that. Not really. But yeah, so I'm going to get the camera set up and then start working on the joint. So the first thing I want to do on this end is take the end off right here, dock it, because it's a little bit punky here, and I think there was a little bit of uh, bug damage to this uh, while it was sitting, or maybe even while it was in the tree. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I'm going to cut this right off first, and then if that still looks good on the end, I'll move on to actually cutting a few lines here and then across that notch there. get it started using a handsaw and then switch over to the uh, two person or the one person cross cut saw which I currently have configured for two people I had some family helping out earlier today. I'm going through I could go all the way through this six by six with this but it would take a very long time so I'm gonna just use it to make a notch. I've got to switch this over, but one thing I should mention is, as of the recording, this is, we're at the beginning of June, maybe first, second week in June, kind of lost track of time by a little bit, but um, I've gotten some comments about uh, the structure as it looks in the intro. Um, it's not actually done. Uh, all the credit for that um, actually showing up in person uh, goes to my brother. Um, whose channel I'll link to down in the description. Um, 
I took my SketchUp model, exported it, sent it over to him, and he was able to uh, composite it into the video um, and track it in, which was really impressive. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to have a shot um, once the structure's actually up um, in the intro. But until then, that's just a rendering. Um, so I'm posting these videos usually a week or so after I get the particular piece of work done, um, depending on how much time I actually have that week. This is so much easier with two people, um, but everyone's either doing chores or out shopping, so just me for That's looking way off on that side. I think I started the cut a little bit weird. <clears throat> Normally I'd care a little bit more, but this end right here is mostly just a rough, as long as it's longer than this, this joint's fine. Um, but I will try and fix it a little bit. I'm used to <clears throat> the past day or so, I've used this in two person mode. So. Calibrating a little bit. tired than I usually would be. This is the uh, second one I'm doing today. I go all the way through one thing to note is normally I'd position this right up against the edge here and that would prevent a lot of the tear out from this end falling out and the weight of the saw on there but because I'm taking most of this wood off anyways I'm just gonna leave it long and not bother moving it around happy with that. 
see if I can show you what I was concerned about. This right here looked a little bit punky, but if you look on the end here, none, none of that actually extends into this piece at all. So, next part is I'm going to cut down to depth in probably three or four spots, and then cut that right there. We'll see if I can start this without, without a notch. Given, I'm just looking on either side, given that that's a little bit squirrely, I'm going to want to put a fair number of notches in here. It's a little bit more upfront work, but definitely pays off in the long run. Because even if you have, let's say, uh, internally it decides to dip down half an inch, or let's say like a quarter inch when you uh, pop into here from the end with a chisel, um, it's only going to be that one small section that's off. It's not going to try and propagate all the way through. Uh, almost there. It's a good thing this isn't a finished face and all this wood is coming off. Oh, got one tooth. Not sure how well you can see this, but. I'm missing the other half of this too, that's how I got the saw, and this tooth before it, or maybe it's this tooth after it, yeah, it's this tooth before it, um, is far, it was filed down further than it needed to be. Or maybe even the tip broke off at one point, I, I got this second hand. Um, so what happens is between this tooth and this tooth, there's a much larger gap than there should be, so especially starting the saw gets a little bit hairy around there, which is why you see it catching. Okay. That part of the saw is tuned up properly. So. advantage of doing this with two people is you can have one person spotting on either side and call out back and forth. Next one, I'm going to notch it, and that should work quite a bit better. Get out here. Hopefully that's enough. You also see, as I get to these pieces, I'll do a much more precise cut. But for now, I'm just cutting down to the line so I can come back through and pop all these pieces off and remove a lot of material pretty quickly. And I could space these out more, um, but a grain on this is a little bit wobbly. And the other part is, this is easier on my shoulder than putting the chisel on the end and smacking it and popping off the larger chunks. So a little bit of extra time now, a little bit more effort. Pays off in the long run.
over onto the other side. I don't really have enough room to step back as far as I'd like. When I get around to the other side, I might try and go recruit some help. Hopefully by then, one of one, a family member or two will have freed up. All right, that's down. Okay. Maybe eighth on the other side. All right, it's looking good. This side is special, as you can see. I'm going to be going right through that knot. This side's pretty straight and clear. I may do less notches on the other side. We'll see how this goes. Another knot right here. This is so much fun. This is fun. I've got a knot here and a knot here. Start on that now. See how well that goes. Yeah, I swear, 
<laughs> that saw is three times as fast with two people and significantly more accurate. One thing worth mentioning here is you want, it's actually a few things worth mentioning here. You want your sub, your kerf here that you set in to be as small as possible. I've actually cut this a little bit too wide, so you can see how this has some room to wobble. So it's not going to cut exactly up against this edge unless I'm very careful. The other thing is I actually want this to angle in a little bit. Um, what that's going to mean is when I go to put in place, I'm really only lining up this line and this line, not this whole face. And for those thinking that, oh, that's not as strong will happen, is this will actually compress a little bit. Um, and between this edge and the one on the tie beam over there, um, it should smush into place, so to speak. That's the theory, anyways. Um, I'll definitely do a post mortem while I, where I grab the camera and climb around the structure in hopefully a month or so and uh, show what these joints actually look like and how precise I was able to get um, with the level of care and attention I put in.
then if some of these look a little bit deep, I'm going to be coming up to the line and just barely taking the line so that it's a, it fits nicely. One more socket and then we can get to the fun part. started with these ones so I could warm back up and get used to this. Because these are, I mean, and let's face it, these are not nice parallel straight or anything remotely like that cuts. But again, as you'll see, that doesn't matter. For these ones, it matters quite a lot more. So what you can't see is there's actually two trunks coming out of here. One here and either a small branch or a side trunk coming out like this. So I'm going to try and take about half of this off and see what it does. But I've got a suspicion this center here is going to dive a little bit. But we'll see. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I have to make sure I don't forget the stuff. So, because I trimmed off the end, I don't have any reference markings on the end here. So what I need to do is carry these lines around here, here, and here, because th that's the line that I'm going to be pairing to, and even roughly choosing to. I don't want to go past that, otherwise I'm going into the tenon itself. So, all I've done is mark on there, line up the uh, straight edge, and carry the line across. Same thing here. If I had a higher production value in this, I'd go through and move the camera around or have another one, but probably as you've guessed, this is just a, kind of a side project, the actual recording of this, which hopefully people will enjoy or find useful, but we'll see. Oh yeah, That's gonna, this is going to be fun. Yep. There you go, you can see what I was worried about. Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Let's see what's on this side. Oh yeah. This is going to be instructive. 
Hopefully. So you can see that hopefully you can see that this dives down like that. And but if I had let it continue onto this, it may have even dove down into this right here. Hopefully it evens out the closer I get to the center, but we'll see. This right here looks reasonable, so I can come down maybe another quarter inch and pop that, yep. Yeah, that's a sign that you probably should have put the tenon somewhere else. <laughs> but, it should be fine once I get to the center. And if it's not, I can always adjust, because I haven't cut that end yet, I can always move this whole joint up five or six inches. If you're good at this, you can usually spot these and avoid this uh, before you start taking away any material. But this is actually the first one I've gotten really unlucky on. Out of the king posts. Oh yeah. This one's going to be a doozy. Yep. Right. I don't know where it's safe to pop off. Bark conclusion. <laughs> this is a little bit silly. Starting to flatten out a little bit here, so we'll see. I spoke too soon, and I did, because that is diving down further than I would like. What I should have done is continue pairing this off, or popping these off and then pairing down and then coming back this way, but. Especially how screwy this is. Oh, that's bad. I may need to move this. We'll see. So I've got about eighth of an inch there. That's digging in a good bit. So let me think about this. So 10 inches of this. I have problems on it. Uh, let's see. So if I come back up to here, roughly in line with that, 11 inches of this are going to be, 10 to 11 inches are going to be within the mortise. So here, approximately is where I'm going to be putting a wedge through. But this is pretty gnar uh, pretty gnarly and tough, which may actually be not a bad thing. It's, it's a two inch mortise, so if I'm out, I don't know, call it eighth of an inch or so down here, at most quarter of an inch, um, 
I don't know how bad that's going to be. I guess I'll finish this side, pare it down, take a look, and decide if I want to move it this way a few inches. Except, well, I have a little bit of room on that side, uh, but not a huge amount. You'll see that uh, later on. Let me continue clearing this out. And I'm not sure how much of this you can see. I think the rest of this is in the way, so... You know what? I'll take a little bit of this out. It's not as bad as I thought. It's not great, but it might be tolerable. In an absolute worst scenario, this piece is pretty easy to mill another one and cut it. It's effort, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm I'm still on the fence. As I take these trunks off, hopefully you can see better what I'm talking about. So that is cracking nice and straight across, which is a good sign. Let's see what the other side looks like. Also straight. Back to the middle. Come on. Oof. Sorry. That's not coming without a fight. Yeah. I'm gonna do it a few pieces. So that's the end of that knot there, hopefully. <laughs> Famous last words. That is still diving down a little bit. Hold the piss right out of it. Huh. All right. Let's see how badly I can mess this up. I mean, to my understanding, that's all of this cross-linked grain is going to make this stronger, and because the end goal is to put a hole here and put a wedge through, that's going to strengthen this area here. At least that's the theory, anyways. Oh, I got a nice bunch of to see what you can see from there. Decide if I want to take this off or reposition the camera. Yeah, you can kind of see what I'm pointing at in there.
again, that <laughs> is screwy. Come back here and just do the easy part. Hopefully the rest of these aren't this bad. I can see that it's already starting to crack here just from checking. So the reasonable assumption would be that that's roughly where it wants to split, but I don't I've got no idea what it's going to do in the center of this. So I'm going to continue to be cautious and only take half of this off at a time. <sighs> that's just ridiculous. So, I haven't mentioned it yet, this is a nice piece of ash, um, and ash use usually splits really nicely. Um, the rest of these have been a heck of a lot easier than this. It shows the absolute worst spot on this beam to put this, <sighs> this joint, or this tenon. That right there is about as hard as it usually is. And this is why you only take a little bit off at a time. So I was only aiming to take this much off, and I, it ended up digging this far down in here. And luckily it didn't go too far down, but this side is going to take a lot longer than I thought. Um, not in this little budget. to decide where to start picking away next. Here seems easy. I'm going to do some of this right here. I think I'm just going to pop this. I mean, the good news is this shows you how to handle pretty much the worst case scenario <laughs> when you run into a piece of wood like this. <laughs> Alright, let's try this. See if I can just dig too far down. So 
that goes about as far down as I should be there. So now I should be able to come in with this. Follow the line. Which you can see. Okay. Now, what am I going to do with that? I just sharpened this chisel this morning, so I'm doing my darndest to dull it right back out again. conclusion so as far as I can tell the bar conclusion runs in it doesn't go too much further than here probably saw that coming, didn't you? Chopping through granite. This other side. <laughs> I 
All right, it's cracked. What the heck am I doing? I'm gonna go get a different chisel. So hopefully, less distance here will mean that I can come in and pop a piece off without engaging with much wood. Why am I still doing this? Yep, that's one knot right there. That's fantastic. Try coming down here and seeing how bad this is. Didn't dive, so not making that mistake again.
That's most of it. For the record, this isn't good practice. I'm just annoyed with this. This far in, might as well finish it. That's how you see, usually is you just, well, you'll see on the other side. I may fast forward through that segment. Maybe this one as well. I don't know. So we've got to take that down. Let's see how all the plane lights go into this. But I'm going to come back through here. Far from the most beautiful tenon, but it should work. Here. these and then let's see what this is going to be like.
more times. I'd be doing this piece with the plane. I may actually end up going electric on this. Yeah. This is slow, but it's not as hard as what I was doing before. Actually, that part's, this area's not looking as bad as I thought. Yeah, this is wearing me a lot. If I can use a hand plane on those, I'm going to have to go a little bit more modern.
bit fast, but it's doable. So I'm going to clean this end up a little bit and then work my way across with the plane. And I might take a little bit of a break. <laughs> Chiseling through plastic. By the way, this is a piece of crap hand plane, but what I've done is put a pretty heavy camber on that and sharpen it reasonably well, so far from a good tool, but it works. Just something. I've just barely taken off the line there. I still need to do that, but I'll do that with the slick later on. I'm not going to subject the slick to this because I spent way too much time sharpening it this morning.
See as I'm clamping this to another piece of wood, so it doesn't move quite as much as I'm working. Would you believe that if I said it's actually not that far from flat? straight to the slick here, but given that this is a stupid, crazy, knotted piece of wood, I'm going to do the chisel first. Tell it's a little bit bowed here up. And I can confirm that by putting the plane on top and rocking it back and forth. Let's see if I can. Alright, up 
to there's tolerable. That actually looks decent. I'm going to take a little bit off of here. Okay, it looks like I lost a little bit at the end of that video. I just finished paring that down and getting it all set. So now we're onto the other side, and if I have any luck left at all, this should be pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to go back to what I was doing before. This on the ground. And Now, if you're curious, I'm not actually measuring this. Um, I'm just kind of eyeballing. Yeah, I'm happy splitting about that much off at any given time. And hopefully on the other side, I'll probably try space, spacing these out a little bit more, but after what happened on the other side, I'm not taking any chances with this. Putting your finger here is not recommended. I've actually lost some sensitivity because I hit this finger with the sock that popped out while I was going, and I think it's partially severed a nerve there. So, if you do that, wear gloves. Or, or be very, very careful.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got some help with this one, so I'm going to do this reconfigured in two-person mode. Stand off to that side. Let's see, I can go back to doing this in uh, single person mode because the stick the camera's on is in the way. But that was a huge help, so much faster than doing all that. And so one person.
Ça. That is so much better. This is how it usually is. The other side was definitely an anomaly. That dove. So I'm going to start this up a little bit higher. It only started to crack. I'll come back to that. That one dove a little bit too. Back to that piece later.
And typically there's no reason to take the chunks off this big. It's just kind of a fun game for me while I'm doing it. It's going to be a little bit low in the center here, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, look at that. That <laughs> dove right in. So there's some artifacts from the other side, but that's about what you can see. So that's where I cut, that's where I broke. So, eh. I can live with it. A little bit off. I know that's diving. I'm going to take this pretty high and see where that comes down. Yep. That, uh, so most of these are diving, so what do I want to do with this? I could come back through here with a chisel, but I kind of want to try... Well, I've got the draw knife. Change things up a little bit. Another good reason to have these saw curves here is so I can tell where this line originally was if I accidentally break something like this off. Luckily for me, I'm rounding the edges of these anyway, so that's not going to show up too, too much.
You can see what I'm doing is I'm scrubbing right down to the saw curve and maybe just a hair below, depending on how close I had gotten to the line. piece of wood. for me to stand is right in front of the camera, so I'm trying to avoid that. I'll clean that up in a sec, but see how this fits so far. Feeling all right. A little more to take off there, but not much. That edge is high. That's a little bit wide here. On both. I mean, this shows is you can sharpen your plane right, get it configured correctly, even a piece of crap like this can serve you reasonably well.
creep it bad. bit of a high spot there as well. It's all looking pretty good. I feel like that'll fit. I might need to go down a hair. Not through there, I think I can look right. A little bit off. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually going to be the result of a mistake. Is so when I docked the end of this here, what I should have done is I should have carried the X across. Given that I still had this line here and this line here, I still have these here, but I can no longer find where exactly this center is. So I'm going to make a bad decision and take a guess based on this, because I can sight down this and roughly see where this ends up. Um, and it looks like it's, it should be about the same on either side, if I did everything else. Say this again, what I'm doing here is not best practices. Do not do it this way. I only did it because I screwed up. It'll still fit, but there's the possibility that it might be cocked one way or another, or this might be off center from where it should be sitting. I'm not going to decide which tool I want to use to 
figure this out. The first thing I want to do is notch this so if I come back this way, I don't crack into this too much. And you can't see my lines because I put them on the other side. Let me flip this around the other way. There. Is that better? Yeah. Just a little bit more in case the mortise. It's perfect as it like. I don't know. Should I try the try the draw knife? It seems straight enough that I might be able to pull it off. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh maybe not. Nope. Draw knife is out. not widen the gullet of this so chips can still easily get stuck in there. Way. I'll try going back to chisel here and see how that fares. Might be a mistake, might not. Only one way to find out.
take a little bit more of that off. Be a little bit the line, but just trust me, it's there. Back to the Notice so far this end of the beam really sucks. direction what grain direction Some to do down toward this end, but so 
here. So, I mean, I'm getting it from where it would fit. That's a little high. But it's going to fit through. So I'll try to plane this once I get it down most of the way. Finish off this area. <laughs> Planing this is, I mean, it's kind of laughable. Especially because I don't have a cap iron. Oh, now the green changed direction again. I can just stick this here and pop the end off. Ouch. But it works, so. It's a low spot. Okay, that feels okay. That feels a little tight. That feels okay. Alright. Okay. So I just want to take here and there. And then I think we're halfway done. <laughs> the other end and the other end it's much more reasonable this one had more knots than I can count which I don't know why I'm saying that because you can see that I mean you can see it better than I can right now but that should fit a little bit up here and in terms of nonsense like that. So, I'm going to pause here and then flip stuff around so you can see the other side.
So this one's definitely not blemish free, but compared to the other one, should be pretty straightforward. I mentioned the saw is not properly tempered. I'm not sure if it got stuck in a fire at some point or what happened, but this section from here to here is not tempered well. This area is reasonably hard, but especially once you get toward here, if you bend it, this area doesn't stick, this area does, so if you see me wailing on this a little bit, it's just to get it back in close to alignment. And again, this one right here, as long as I'm past this line this way, this is fine. So I'm going to be coming along once the structure is together and cutting off the top inch or so of this. Um, or potentially even further, depending on how deep and if there's a rafter coming through this area. So we'll see. do that piece and then I'm going to take a little bit of a break, come back out, cut this and hopefully finish this up tonight. need to slow down and get this one. Like these ones, I do not need to be accurate. These two, it doesn't, it's not the end of the world if they're not dead on, but the joint is stronger the closer to this line I can get it, not screwing it up. I just 
decided to try something a little bit different there. Cut into it on the side. It did not go as well as I had hoped. Can I correct for it? And it's all wasted, just a matter of how accurate I can get the perk for the uh, larger saw. That's pretty bad right there. I need to take a break and cool off and rest after that ridiculous tenon. Better could have been worse. Right. <clears throat> so I flipped it around, got another helper, shift this over to the other side. going all the way through. Oh, you know what I should do first is I should clamp this in place. <laughs> following parallel with this because you're wandering a little bit one side or the other.
Good. So for this as well, you're going to want to uh, angle this way and try and push it toward this area here. turn quite that much. Okay, let me move it this way a little bit. Get a better range of motion. Got a quarter inch. Eighth of an inch. I'm good. Me too. Okay. All right. All right. On to the other side. This one's going to be a little bit iffy because it's going through the knot.
this looks like, if I had to guess, it's going to split upward, which is, I guess, is preferable to the alternative. I almost forgot a step again. I'll carry all three of these across. And Popping pieces off. Hopefully, without having to try. There we go. Through or not, but nowhere near as bad as the other side. This I can move on. It's actually kind of pretty in there. <laughs> Pulled that. You see what happened there? Because I was levering up on this, it actually pulled a piece out of the end of the tenon. That's pretty crazy. Just that little bit right there actually pulled that whole chunk out.
we'll see how much it helps us. I'll be honest, that was not what I was expecting. This is definitely the worst luck I've had of placing tenants since I started this project. Hopefully, I will not get a piece worse than this in the rest of the project. But compared to the other side, this is tolerable. Yeah, that just pops off. Definitely not, not my best pick, but I'm reasonably happy with that.
skip this. Nice to be able to change up what muscles you're using <laughs> periodically. Because keep in mind, I've been doing this since 8 in the morning. I've taken a few breaks, but definitely starting to feel it. a little bit more to go on this side.
to work. Alright, on to the next side. And the final piece of this tenon. What I'm hoping for is because this is the last one, three in here will be, will be nice for me. I won't have anything to fight with. One second. Alright. So what's interesting is the heart of the tree, I and mean, the tree kind of bent out this way, so. Theoretically, well, I don't know what this is going to do, so I'm just going to do the standard half, half and half. Yep, so hopefully you can see that line goes all the way down there. So that's going to be a little bit of a pain, but I haven't dove too deep to recover, so Bring that across. Hopefully it didn't go too deep in the middle, but what happens happens. No, that was cut. Oh, come on. is cracking in interesting ways. Well, the good news is you guys get to see all the ways to do this wrong as I'm going through this. This piece. This one is going to be down there. That's right down to the line. That's okay. What about you? Uh, 
I really need to replace this handle. I'm gonna also be using it way too much. There we go. So I went down maybe an eighth of an inch there, which considering what that slope is, is par for the course. So for this one, again, I have no idea what this is going to do. So start halfway. I hope it doesn't go far enough that I can't recover. Right down into the middle. I have some decisions to make as far as how I proceed here. This side, I definitely have some room to go. So I'll do half here. That's okay. Ish. I'm not going to get much more out of that. See, that went almost straight across there, so and we'll do the same thing. And that dug right in. That's fantastic. I swear, this is the first log I've ever had this much trouble with. Ah, it was the slow way. I think I could probably pop some more of that off. If I'm careful. Yep. Got away clean. Fish. How do I want to do this? You can actually see the, the direction the center of the tree took right there. That's the pith in the middle. I'm going to try playing with the drill, see if I can't hurt myself using that. Sorry, I'm just a little annoyed at this point. This is, as I just mentioned, the worst log I've worked on. Possibly in the whole project so far.
probably down far enough there that I can plane that. Especially after what I'm doing for that part. A little bit straighter grain, so I might be able to come right here. back to the set this real deep and see how much of that I can take off. need to take a quick break. I will be back in a few minutes. All right. Hold off for a bit. Calm down a little bit. And uh, I'm going to come back and wrap this up. that I might be able to pull some of this out. Now that I've cleared that out of the way, I'm going to come back through with this, and it'll engage right off the bat. Well, that's the theory, anyways. Actually, not bad. It doesn't have a uh, 
doesn't have a cap iron. But at least it stays sharp. But the handles, this is rough molded plastic. And this is where most of my blisters come from. Not any other tools, but this alone is just not set up well. Pretty much dead on, that should slot right in. Don't need to tune that up anymore. Come around to this side. Scrubbing some of this out. problem with that right there is I keep smashing my knuckles right up against there. Honestly, this stuff sits inside the joint. As long as the material's out of the way, I can live with it. Oh, that is just a pain. Good. A little bit off there, but the rest of that seems to fit. 
take a little bit off there and I think that's good. And all I have to do is come back along and clear that out. A little bit on either side and then probably later tonight I'll do some test pits. I'll either include that directly in this video or just take some pictures and include it as sort of a slideshow at the end. That I've got to take down a little. Got a different tool. And Definitely not my prettiest one, but should do just fine. So, as I just mentioned, I've got a right here, and roughly line that up with where I think that translates down here. I don't really know the exact way of doing this, but should be close enough. not to do that so far. And in theory, I should be able to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side. That way, I can see all the way along where I should and should not be taking off material. Sides all marked. Come back over here and do the same thing. It looks like it should come down about to there. Yes, that's there. And I can sight down the beam and make sure that that's where it should be. Good news is that lines up pretty well with what I was seeing on the other side. A little bit more off this side than this side, but a little bit. And carry the lines to it.
but That's hilarious. I have chosen the absolute worst piece that I could show these techniques, at least for my own sandwich. But the nice part is anything you choose, the worst it could possibly be is this. on the other side and then we are done. Take a little bit off of that. There's a little bit small on the end, but that should be okay. Just about there. Even though this is a little bit small, I'll be driving wedges in this way, in this part of the structure, so that'll spread that to fill the mortise. So I don't have to worry about that too, too much.
going to call that good enough. So, I know that was a little bit repetitive, it was kind of the same thing twice, but hope you enjoyed seeing how this sort of thing gets put together, and uh, hopefully this all fits when I go to test it later. So, um, hope to see you in the next one. The next uh, video to come out should be the short posts, followed by the long posts, followed by actually raising the structure. So, stick around, it's only a couple weeks away now.